Yeah. Which NFC North quarterbacks under the most pressure in 2019? For me, it's Mitchell Trubisky. Um, he had a relatively decent year last year. Obviously, uh, wasn't that great in the postseason against the Philadelphia Eagles, even though their kicker got most of that attention. Had a pretty decent year last year. But when you look at that defense, uh, that, that I, I'm not going to call it monsters of the midway the way it used to be uh, with Singletary and the crew, uh, but with Khalil Mack and those boys there, a lot of people are expecting big things from the Chicago Bears because of that defense. So that means your quarterback's got to hold up his end of the bargain. He was the number two overall pick years ago. Remember, they passed up on guys like Deshaun Watson to grab somebody like a Mitchell Trubisky. He's got to show up and show out. He's got to show that he's worth it. And with a defense and with Nagy, Nagy proving that he can really, really coach, uh, the bottom line is there's really no excuse. Mitchell Trubisky's got to show up, and let's see what he does. If there's he does. pressure on Trubisky, no doubt. There's some pressure on Stafford, although it doesn't to me look like there's more pressure than any NFL quarterback on Stafford. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Kirk Cousins for sure. He got that big contract and the whole knock on him. What I said, like sometimes those are empty calorie numbers and it seems that way again. Um, no one has more pressure than Aaron Rodgers in the NFC North. No way, including Trubisky. Look, if you don't think that making the playoffs, going on a run, winning another Super Bowl is important because, well, Rodgers is already a future Hall of Famer. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. I'll remind you of, Let's start. Let's let's take the difference between and it's not just one Super Bowl like Marino went to a Super Bowl. There are quarterbacks that won a Super Bowl. Peyton Manning's status had been knocked way down. He did not want a second Super Bowl. And by the time he won his second, he won as good. You know, he really wasn't good anymore. But still, it kind of accrues to his mm -hmm. redounds to his greatness. John Elway. John Elway was going to be was one of the greatest talents anyone ever saw. But he kept coming up short. Right wasn't until he got a running back at the end when he wasn't even as great anymore that he went back to back. But now think of how we think of Elway. Compare that to a guy like, say, Donovan McNabb. Right. Was Elway better than McNabb? Are we sure that he was? I think maybe he was a little bit. I don't know. Like, McNabb was very, very, very good. Yes. Overall. Never won a Super Bowl. Right. If McNabb won a Super Bowl or two, we would remember him the way we remember John Elway, mm -hmm. like on that level. If you think it doesn't make a difference because Aaron Rodgers has already won one, Aaron Rodgers, you say it, I say it, others, oh, most talented player of all time at the position. And is a great player, super great, won a Super Bowl, MVP, the whole thing. Guys, five years ago, was anyone saying Drew Brees is better than Aaron Rodgers? You know there are lots of people making that argument now, historically, who's going to go down ahead of whom? Tom Brady, because he's got six, is the GOAT, right? <laughs> he's out of reach, it would seem. But Aaron Rodgers... He could start to fall down in his own era in terms of the way we remember this. He just ran his old coach out of town for good reason. He's got a new one who's more kind of analytically oriented. If this doesn't work out, Stephen A., if they don't make the playoffs, if they don't make, go on a little playoff run, Rodgers' place in history is compromised. Well, you could say that. I think it's already compromised because he's only been to one Super Bowl and he won that. But I will tell you this. Uh, listen. When you look at Matt LaFleur, the bottom line is, is that you, are, you, 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 you failed up. You were in Tennessee. Your offense was ranked 27th, and you got a head coaching job out of that. I mean, go figure. And not only did you get a head coaching job, but you got a head coaching job coaching Aaron Rodgers. I don't think the press is on Aaron Rodgers like that at all. If Aaron Rodgers hadn't been hurt the last two years, played through it last year, year before, was knocked out with the collarbone because Anthony Carr, Anthony Barr, rather, from Minnesota, mm -hmm. took him out game three or four into the season – Aaron Rodgers, you look at him and you say, okay, he hasn't been 100%. That's the reason why Green Bay was Green Bay over the last two years. Nobody's questioning anything about Aaron Rodgers. And not only that, I told you about Trubitsky. Oh, who else is in the conference? Kirk Cousins, Mr. 28 million, uh, 28 million per year dollar man, okay, in Minnesota, getting 28 million in guaranteed dollars, 84 billion overall, and can't, can't get to a damn playoff game. And then you've got Matthew Stafford, who's been in Detroit, and they haven't won a playoff game since 1991 as a franchise, for crying out loud. So I'm looking at it from this perspective. Don't come to me with Aaron Rodgers in the NFC North when you got Trubitsky, Stafford, and obviously, uh, Kirk Cousins. That's how I view it. Le Fleur. Le Fleur. Le Fleur. Um, Le Fleur. That's the name. What your argument right. is, is actually more pressure on Rodgers. And disagree. I'll tell you why. Le Fleur is uh, an unproven commodity. We yes, don't he, know how good he is. If right. he's not very good as a head coach in the NFL, you and I might say, come on, who did Rodgers have? McCarthy wasn't keeping up with the times. Then he got a guy who couldn't coach, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Some people will say that. But history will remember. Don't give me a bunch of excuses. Like, the bottom line is, 
what this did, did, dude did. He got rid of one coach. Another came in. There are more excuses. Then a third coach is brought in. The bottom line is no one's going to remember LaFleur if he's no good. But people will remember Aaron Rodgers. And what the, and he'll be remembered, much, even though he's got the one Super Bowl win, the stakes have been raised. He will be remembered much more like Dan Marino than like others. Like, boy, that guy was the best I've ever seen. But you can't say he's the greatest because he didn't real, win enough. Real quick before we go to break, guys, who wins the NFC North this year, you think? I'm going to go Bears? with Chicago because of that yeah. defense. Same. I'm going to yeah, go Bears. with Chicago for the, the, with Green Bay battle for a wild card. And spot. a coach that's a proven offensive mind in, in Chicago. So the, and, and Trubisky, by the way, who to me is all he's already better than I thought he'd be. There mm-hmm. are a couple quarterbacks like that around the league. Trubisky keeps kind of proving me wrong. He may be a little better than I'm giving him credit for even now. So I, I agree. The Bears got to be considered number one. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.